located at the northeastern corner of Sarawak, at about 3,500 feet above sea level, lies the Barrio Highland, a Kalabi territory belongs to one of the Orang Ulus tribe of Sarawak. It's known as the land of a hunter handshake, as friendly local will greet you with a handshake as you mingle around the community. Barrio has a small airport and a simple network of roads connecting some of the nearby villages. We took a 15 minute flight from Miri to Barrio and were treated with the breathtaking views as the plane flew low over the surrounding area. Once we landed, it was time to settle into our new home, the Nancy Harris Guest House. It may be basic, but it is clean and cozy. The main building welcomes us with a spacious sitting room, followed by an inviting dining area. We will stay in a separate chalet just a minute away. After lunch, our plan was to visit a natural salt spring near a village, but we found the spring unattended upon arrival. But our guide stepped in to explain the salt making process. Salt is extracted from a well water and transferred to a cooking drum. The villagers heat the salt water over the fire until the water evaporates, which takes about 24 hours. Next, the salt is then placed in a bamboo, and after that, they burn the bamboo inside the fire until the salt solidifies and hardens. The salt is then removed, cleaned, and finally wrapped in leaves and tied up with rattan. Oh, you mean they have that and they, they stuff into the bamboo again and they, they, they heat it up again and keep it really dry. It's a long process. Next, we visit a fruit farm near Pak Ukat. The primary crop is grapes. And the person in charge stated that the grapes grown here are primarily hybrid species from different countries. They are conducting further research and test to determine the species for the best suit to the climate of Barrio and produce the highest quality grapes. However, they cultivate other food as well, including chilies, golden melons, apples, dragon fruits, durians, and pineapples. Nangchum. Yeah. Chumbadam and jackfruit mix. Three years can bear food. One year can And one of the highlights of our trip, an immersive cultural performance by the local people. This wasn't just a show, it was a chance to connect with the soul of Barrio. The performance was a medley of traditional songs and dances, both solos and group acts. But the real magic happened when we were invited to join. It was more than a performance, it was an opportunity to learn and become part of the local culture, an experience that left us truly <laughs> enchanted. Of 
si que no An old playing rack has become a popular tourist attraction due to its unique and picturesque scenery at Nancy Harry's guest house. It is only a minute's walk from the main building of the guest house and it is cut into three sections. According to Nancy, the old runway of Barrio Airport is nearby. Back in 1964, a plane skied off the runway and it was damaged beyond repair and was written off. Nancy's father-in-law was unhappy with the plane rack being so close to the paddy field, but it was too heavy to remove it. Therefore, he cut it into three sections to move it away from its original position. Since then, it has become a popular tourist attraction. Next on our list was trekking, and we were all about outdoor life. So when we heard about the Pa Ramapu Waterfall Trail, we were in. It took us about an hour to reach the waterfall. Some paths were muddy and be ready for some narrow paths and steep climbs. What's cool about this trail is its raw and touched beauty. No boardwalks, just pure nature. We will soak it all in and of course capture some amazing moments. Oh, finally we arrive. Video. Now, what a trip to Barrio without visiting a longhouse. On day two, we explore the Barrio Asao Laba longhouse, a real gem with 23 doors and traditional architecture. Inside, it is divided into three parts, the kitchen, living quarters, and a common hall with family photos. Madam Bulan, a relative to Nancy, greeted us at a longhouse and showed us around. One of the oldest longhouse and the first modern longhouse also. 
in those days we live on stilt. So when I was born, she said, name her after me. So now she is already a grandmother. A mother, they change her name. When we do name changing, that is why our our rua is like this. Our veranda is like this. We will, everybody will come here. We will call every Kalabit people, the open invitation to come for the ceremony. And that is where you announce that you are a parent mm. and you are going to change to a new name. And I am no longer Kobula in the in the society. I'll be mm. different name. <laughs> so funny, yo. <laughs> so for the Kalabit lady, last time, if you don't have this one, mm -hmm. the earring, the lobe yeah. being elongated and you don't have the, the, and the, the head, yeah. and then uh, you must be tattooed. Yeah. Tattooed from here to here. Yeah. Then the, the men will not want to marry you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's also a homestay operator of Barrio Valley and invited us to a homestay. This is our, what, this is our what do you call it? Our rice meal. Our, our rice meal. Without this, before we don't have any rice to eat. Mm. So, uh, yeah, what we do is every, like for us last time, every weekend our parents will say, Big, uh, this weekend we are drying paddy for you too. So we found here. Mm. We we found it here. So until your until your palm blister, mm -hmm. then only you can have rice. Mm -hmm. how long she you then demonstrated mm -hmm. how the parents prepare meals for them early in the morning using the traditional oh, kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Kitchen, kitchen. kitchen. This is the original kitchen. Yeah, four o'clock in the morning, no light. If all our parents will be like doing their cooking, so start to cook their cook. How to cook? You but now you don't use. The next morning, we went to the town center where we tried the famous barrio laksa and purchased some local barrio salt. Yeah, this one is soft, you know? Yeah. This one is not bad. Yeah. It's soft. Mm. It's soft, man. After that, we head to Kampong Arudalan. Walking through the paddy fields, we met an elderly Telapi woman outside the longhouse. She was one of the few ladies we met in Baru with extended earlobes and revealed that she was 74 years old. She still attended to her small pineapple farm and fed her chickens daily. And we wondered about the future of Kalabi people here with only around 1,000 remaining in Baru. Most of the young generation has left for the city, leaving behind only children and the elderly. We wonder if we would still be able to meet anyone with extended earlobes if we revisit Barrio when the current generation of the elderly is no longer around. We cherish our carefree moment walking around the village, something we rarely experience in the city. As our trip came to the end, we packed our bags, say goodbye to Barrio, and make our way back to the airport. So, was Barrio worth it? Absolutely. The weather, the scenery, the incredible Kalabi people all are unforgettable. It's a chance to disconnect from the world and reconnect with nature. Basic, unpolluted, and unpretentious, just the way we like it. next adventure and until then keep exploring and embracing the world's wonders.